Marantz PM 64 Mark II 1987 Stereo Amplifier This is the documentation of the experience of a hobby project, made with the hope that it could be helpful to others. But any comment that could help me to improve my practice is also welcome and appreciated. Unlike other videos in this series, this particular one shows a very simple cleaning process, and there is no extra written documentation attached to it. This was a fairly expensive amplifier, produced in the late 1980s. When looking for the service manual, it should not be confused with the predecessor model PM64, which has similar schematics, but not identical. This is the correct service manual for the model PM64 Mark II. Please notice that inside the cabinet, the internal power supply is not isolated, nor shielded, and servicing it requires the same care for safety that one should have for servicing a vacuum tube radio. Moreover, the main board is powered with different DC lines, two of which provide plus 56 and minus 56 volts, and these are already dangerous voltages. Another interesting detail is that the power cord includes an external ground connection, which however is not connected. Considering that the internal power supply is not well isolated, and that there can be some leakage current between the metal cabinet and ground, it could be a good idea to connect the external ground to the cabinet for safety. The cabinet back panel has an input voltage selector, that allows choosing between 220 and 240 volts. In Europe, the mains voltage has been harmonized to 230 volts, and in this case, between 220 and 240, it is advisable to select 240 volts. I do not have a personal interest in amplifiers, even less if they are solid state. But my cousin asked me to check it and clean it, and then he told me the story and the meaning of this item for the family, knowing which made it very important for my feelings as well. So here is the beginning of the process, starting from removing the six screws that hold the top cover. This amplifier is very clean. However, a little amount of dust made it inside the cabinet, and blowing some air is a good idea. The bottom panel is removed. There are ten screws holding it. The knobs are removed. There are two groups of knobs, and in each group, the knobs are identical and interchangeable. The holes on the front panel are as large as the knobs, therefore the front panel could be removed without removing the knobs. To avoid scratching the front panel, it is better to remove it. It is held in place by six screws. One of them is hidden by some soft tape. Now that the space behind the front panel is accessible, more cleaning is in order. The main volume potentiometer and the input selector rotary element are temporarily removed from the panel that would allow later access to other controls under them.
it is now possible to start using the contact cleaner for all the potentiometers and switches. The volume potentiometer is installed again on the panel, and the same is done for the input selector rotary element. The amplifier is now ready to be tested. While testing the amplifier, feeding an audible sine wave to one of the amplifier inputs, it appears that there is a significant distortion on the right channel. Trying to troubleshoot the issue, it appears that the distortion is generated somewhere in this area of the mainboard. However, after some unsuccessful attempts of locating the culprit, the distortion suddenly disappears and the cause remains a mystery. In the end, the two channels appear perfectly aligned without the need of touching any of the adjustments. Everything seems to be okay, so the cabinet can be reassembled. Together with the amplifier, also the tuner ST35 came for cleaning and for an inspection. There is nothing remarkable to report about it except that I find unwise the fact that the power cord does not include an external ground connection, while the internal power supply is not so well insulated against the metal cabinet. It is a pity that for such a beautiful 
and fairly expensive tuner, no short wave band was designed. I don't have good quality loudspeakers for testing the amplifier. However, everything seems to be okay. With the receiver, only a scan on the AM band is done. The FM works just fine. Thank you. 
praticamente la linea di costa è avanzata di 4 km. Il porto di Claudio era più avanzato e fu costruito da Claudio del 41 a.C. e poi fu inaugurato da Nerone per l'occasione per imponiare anche una moneta e perché in quel momento la città di Ostia era veramente alla massima espansione e servivano derrate alimentari, e serviva tutto. E l'unico porto era quello di Pozzuoli, quindi molto più a sud. Quindi era tutto molto complicato. È vero che Ostia, Ostia uno cuoce, era sull'imbocco del Tevere, ma era spesso già per insabbiamento ed era un porto.